Look at this big old blob. I believe we just found a die cut. Hello, coin enthusiasts out there. It is I, Dax Collects, and we have six penny boxes right in front of us here in this video. We are going to open two of these penny boxes up. Let's see what we can find inside of these boxes here. Before we find out which of these boxes will be opened up in this video, if you haven't seen my last penny box video, which I would highly recommend, I'll put the card right up here for you. Let's just say I found my most valuable penny yet in that video. So give it a watch if you have any time. Now, we're gonna roll this die twice, and this will determine the two boxes for the video. So crown is a crown, and six is a six. Crown two, three, four, five, six. All right, let's see. Three. This box here is the first one. I was getting flashbacks of when I rolled five, five times in a row. <laughs> I was thinking, how many times are we going to find threes? This time it was only three times, which is still not very often. Five. So this one here is the first one. And let's find out which one is the second. Two. This box here will be second. So let's get started right away with this two box penny hunt. Got Bandy tagging along with me in this hunt, as always. This lucky charm here was featured in my last penny box video where we found that very valuable penny in circulation. Here we have penny box number 83. Let's open this box up and let's check out those enders. Now, when I go through these rolls, I look out for wheat pennies, Indian head pennies as well. I've only found one all time going through these boxes and any varieties. So I'll point those out as we go through the rolls. I don't see any enders here that stand out. I'll check the bottom half and I'll point out anything there that I see. Just a standard box as far as the enders go. So now it's time to go through these rolls. Now here we go for the 83rd time, folks. Let's see what this penny box has to offer. Let's get started right away. So with that being said, let's get right into it. We are off to a slow start with this box here. Our first find is inside of roll number 12. Here it is. Starting off with a Canadian penny with the tiara obverse design showing Queen Elizabeth wearing a tiara. And... This one is from the year 1969. The only Queen Elizabeth tiara penny that I'm missing is the 1985.5, but we'll still check all of the Canadian pennies we find for upgrades. Just a few pennies later, on the very same roll, we found our first wheat penny, and it actually looks pretty nice. Look at that. Not in the worst shape. Probably from the 50s, but it could surprise us. Maybe it'll be earlier than that. Let's find out. We have a 1958 Denver right here. The final year of the wheat penny. Now here's a nice find. Inside of roll number 17, we have an old Canadian penny. I tend to find one of these per two box hunt. They seem to be kind of common where I live. We have Queen Elizabeth II with the Laureate portrait design from the year 1957. Right now, we're only missing two Laureate portrait Canadian pennies to complete the set. 
but we will still check this 1957 later on to see if it upgrades. And now we found wheat penny number two of the box inside of roll number 23. We have a 1953 minted in Denver. Very common wheat penny. Find tons of these in these circulated boxes. Still not finding a lot of wheat pennies in this box. Here's our third one inside of roll number 28. 1956 Denver. Once again, a very common wheat penny. Nothing too special about this one. After opening two more rolls, we found another Canadian penny. This is number three of the box. 1970. And of course, showing the Tiara Obverse design. This box is starting to heat up. Inside of the very next roll, Here's Wheat Penny number four. Let's take a look. 1951, Philadelphia. We have two finds inside of roll number 37. We have one Wheat Penny right here and another right here. Our second 1958 Denver. Well, let's check out this one. Maybe it's one we've never seen before. Oh, we've definitely have seen this before. 1951 Denver. And here is the 58 Denver right here. Not as nice as the first one that I showed you guys, but still wheat penny regardless. And yet again, we have another roll with two finds. Four rolls later, inside of roll number 39. We have a Canadian penny here. And a wheat penny right here. Well, let's check out the Canadian penny first. 1966. Not in terrible shape. Still has a very minimal amount of luster left. And let's take a look at this wheat penny right here. Our first one from the 40s in this box. 1946. Minted in Denver. Not bad. We are now less than 10 rolls away from finishing this box. We found another Canadian penny three rolls later. Here it is. 1976 this time. Inside of the very next roll is Canadian penny number six. Let's take a look. We have a 1968 Canadian penny right here. We just found wheat penny number eight inside of roll number 48, 1945, Philadelphia. Over a billion of these were minted in circulation. So a very common wheat penny. Just finished penny box number 83. Let's do a full box recap right now. Here's what we found. Two wheat pennies from the 1940s. Six wheat pennies from the 1950s, six Canadian pennies, and three 2009 pennies right here. A pretty standard box. Didn't find anything too crazy, but it was still fun. We'll check to see if any of these wheat pennies are upgrades for the book, as well as these Canadian pennies. Got plenty of chances. Now let's go ahead and go straight to the next box of the video and here's penny box number 84 let's do a quick check on these enders do we have a wheat penny editor let's see don't see any on the top half of the box i'll go ahead and check the bottom half 
didn't find anything too special for the Enders in this box either. Our last box had eight wheat pennies. Let's see how many we can find in this box. Let's see if there are any additions inside of this box. Let's get started right away. So with that being said, let's get right into it. We're off to a great start with this box. Inside of the very first roll, here's our first wheat penny. And in pretty good shape. 1953, Philadelphia. Look at that luster. Beautiful. Now check this out. Inside of roll number three, we have a wheat penny right in front. And also just behind the first wheat penny. So we have two of them. First one is the 1956 Denver right here. And just behind that is a 1941 Philadelphia. Both common wheat pennies. So nothing too fancy. Let's keep looking. Five rolls into the box. We found our first Canadian penny of the box. It's a 1972 Canadian penny right here. Love seeing these wheat pennies right off the bat. Inside of roll number seven, this is wheat penny number four. Here's an interesting one. We have a 1951 San Francisco right here. Not terribly common. Now take a look at what I just found inside of roll number nine. Look at this big old blob. I believe we just found a die cut right here. This blob is definitely a part of the coin. There's no doubt about it. Oh man. Now normally when you find something like this, you take a look at the reverse and wherever you have that die cut at, there's like a weakness on the reverse of the coin where it is. Since it's right in between the E and C, you can't really see it. At first, I didn't really see any signs of weakness on the reverse, but later on, I actually found weakness right in the rim area. So just under the E and C, it's a little bit weaker than it should. Obviously, the whole rim should show. That area there is weak, and it's not really that big of a die cut. Still a really cool find. I'll show you guys the edge as well. Here's the coin. There is no damage to the edge of the coin. Kind of coincidental that we found a die cut penny from the year 1984 in penny box number 84. Funny how that goes. All right, let's keep on going. Okay, it is now the next day, September 11th, 2024. Let's finish this box up today. We are currently on roll number 19. And we have two Canadian pennies inside of this roll. One right here and one right here. So let's check this one out. 1981. Not bad. And this one right here. 1980. And there's that. Just found Wheat Penny number five of the box. Inside of roll number 22. Let's check it out. It's facing the reverse side. 1946, Philadelphia. Very common wheat penny right here. And now we found Canadian penny number four, two rolls later. Here it is. We have a 1987 right here. The edge is a little different compared to the ones that we've seen in this video. This one has a 12-sided edge. Another three rolls into the box. 
we found wheat penny number six. Definitely looks like a 50s wheat penny. Let's take a look. 1957, minted in Denver. A few pennies later into the roll. Here's another Canadian penny. Let's take a look at this one. 1973. Seven more rolls into the box. Here's another wee penny. We have a 1958 Denver right here. We have two wheat pennies inside of roll number 38. We have one right here. And then there's another one right here. Point it. I'll show you guys what this one is right after this one. The second wheat penny is from the teens. But let's see when this coin was minted. 1952. Denver and here's the old wheat penny in very very slick condition here it's very slick you can barely make out the details but here it is we have a 1918 Philadelphia wheat penny have found a couple of these in the past. It's fairly common, but still a wheat penny over a century old. And that is awesome to see. Here's another wheat penny. I thought this was an old wheat penny, but it's not. This is our second 1946 Philadelphia wheat penny. Just finished. Penny box number 84. Here's the full box recap. We found a 1918 Philadelphia wheat penny in this box. Three wheat pennies here from the 1940s. Six wheat pennies here from the 1950s. Five Canadian pennies. Ten 2009 pennies. And one small die cut error right here. From the year 1984, Philadelphia. Besides the die cut penny we found, this was a very standard box. Did not find any additions to the books. So we will check all these for upgrades very shortly. But first, let's go ahead and bring down all the finds of the two boxes into a two box recap. Here's all we found. In this two box penny hunt, one wheat penny from the teens, five wheat pennies from the 40s, quite a few from the 50s, that's 12 of them, 11 Canadian pennies, all from different years. Thirteen two thousand nine pennies, and that small die cut penny right here. So even though no additions were found in this two box penny hunt, still had a good time. Now let's go ahead and weigh these two thousand nine pennies here, and check for the copper variant. They have to weigh three point one grams, just like a regular copper penny. I'll be right back once I have finished weighing all of these pennies here. Did not find any copper pennies from 2009. Before we start going through the collection books, let's put this penny here inside of a coin holder. Beautiful. Let's start with the Lincoln pennies first. Here we have the Lincoln Pennies collection book number two between the years 1941 to 1974. With a snap of my finger, I'll have the upgrades prepared for you and we'll go ahead and plug them in in a few seconds. We have two upgrades for this collection book. 
a pretty marginal upgrade, but an upgrade nonetheless. 1951 Philadelphia. And then definitely an upgrade here. 1953 Philadelphia. Let's go ahead and plug these coins in right now. There we go. Now here's what this collection book looks like before and after penny boxes number 83 and number 84. Very happy with the upgrades. Still stuck on the two 1943 steel pennies here. Here's the funny thing though. I went to my local coin star where I live and I found two steel pennies at that coin star. Someone must have dumped in these coins and it was rejected because obviously they are magnetic. They don't take any magnetic coins. But I found a 1943 Philadelphia and a 1943 Denver. So pretty cool stuff. Now, am I going to plug these into the book? Absolutely not. Just thought I would share that. We're still going to try our best to find those steel pennies, as well as find any more upgrades to make this book stand out just a little bit more. Now let's go ahead and close this book. Next up is this one. Lincoln Penny's collection book number one between the years 1909 to 1940. Now, I did put a placeholder penny in the 1924 Denver spot. We found it. Just did not feel comfortable putting it in there for a coin that has a very, very low mintage. Now, here's that 1918 wheat penny. Let's compare the two. It's a very close call. Usually, if it's too close to call, I won't upgrade. As it stands, we have still found 40 wheat pennies for this collection book. We will continue our grind to find these missing wheat pennies in the future. Now, let's go ahead and close this book. And now we have one last collection book here. That we're going to check for upgrades. Canada Small Sense Collection Book number one between the years 1920 to 1988. And we have one upgrade 1980. Let's plug in this Canadian penny into the collection book. And there we go. Very happy with the upgrade. Still missing a few KG6 Canadian pennies, of course. And the two Laureate Portrait Canadian pennies. So we'll continue our guide to find those out there in circulation in the future. Let's go ahead and close this book. Now, as for these Canadian pennies, we'll put them in this Ziploc bag with all the other foreign coins. Now we have one thing left to do. Check these coins for varieties. So I'll go ahead and do that now. And if I find anything, I will let you guys know. And if not, then I'll go ahead and conclude the video right here. We'll show off our best find of this two box penny hunt. The Dica 1984 Philadelphia. Let me know down in the comments if you have found any varieties as of late. Let me know if you've found any DDOs, DDRs, and or RPMs in your hunts. And let me know what you have in your possession. Those include any wheat pennies, Indian head pennies, Flying Eagle pennies, or anything older than that. And let me know if you have any graded pennies as well. 
I would love to hear what you guys have in your collection. Another two box penny hunt in the books. We are getting very close to opening 100 penny boxes on this channel. And I will let you guys know what we're going to do when we get closer to 100. Now it is time to sign off. So thank you guys for tuning in. This has been Dax Collects, and I'll catch you guys on the flip. Good luck hunting, everyone, and have a good one. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. If you want to check out another video, click on the bottom left corner. See you guys next time.